Got my limits with promethazine Cause every time I wake up in the morning I got murder on my mind AK-47, Mac 11, Glock, and 9s and all these Well, this morning we're shining our opening statement spotlight on the pending murder retrial for rapper YNW Melly. So he's accused of orchestrating a fake drive-by shooting that killed his two childhood best friends, allegedly as part of a possible gang initiation. The jury was deadlocked, and while not an acquittal, the mistrial declaration was kind of a win for the defense. Disappointed. We were hoping to have Melly come home with us all, but we'll deal with it shortly uh, in the next trial. We felt positive during this trial. Right. I think uh, we will feel even better next time around. That's all I can say. All right. Now, recently, Melly's defense team got another big win as they've now successfully managed to get the lead prosecutor from the case removed. So this means that Mally's retrial is now going to be delayed slightly. We have to wait a little bit longer to see if murder really was on Melly's mind. We got to talk about this. This is big. This, this is really big. The allegation is that this prosecutor didn't turn over discoverable information, you know, pursuant to Brady, the Brady rule, you got to turn it all over. Uh, and if you don't, uh, this could be a violation. And now the defense wants to call her as a witness. I want to bring back in the director of prosecution projects at Florida International University and former homicide prosecutor Melba Pearson and celebrity civil litigator John M. Phillips. Uh, John, welcome to the conversation. You're also licensed to practice in Florida where this trial is happening. Oh boy. Okay, so here we have Christine Bradley, the former lead prosecutor on the case now taken off of this death penalty trial, double murder trial. Um, to remind everybody what she looks like, I have a clip of her. Um, this is a clip from the opening statements in the first trial, where she is talking about Melly's alleged admissions to the murders. This individual is reaching out, asking if Mr. Demons is good, after he's been tagged in multiple social media posts about this drive through this shooting. And Mr. Demons responds very succinctly, I did that. All right, this is who we're talking about here. So situation goes like this. One of the police witnesses apparently asked another police witness to lie and say he was present during the execution of a search warrant, um, I believe on Melly's mother's phone. I'm correct on that. And there was no reason to need another officer there. One can just do it without having another one present. But apparently there was um, the comment to the other officer to lie. And this prosecutor was made aware of it, but did not disclose it to the defense team that one of her witnesses was encouraging another one to lie. Uh, she didn't disclose it. The defense said this is a huge Brady violation. And we want to call her now as a witness to talk about that detective and how he encouraged the deputy to lie to try to discredit him. Uh, so now she's off the case. Uh, Melba Pearson, your reaction to this happening with this prosecutor? As someone who literally lives 45 minutes south of Broward County and you know, a former prosecutor myself in Miami, let me tell you something, this is huge. And this is one of the biggest nightmares that any prosecutor could face where you're getting taken off the case and now being called as a witness in said case. I mean, this is, this is monumental and very disruptive, of course, to the victim's family, to the case itself, because now that you've been removed from the case, the new prosecutor that's coming on board doesn't have the benefit of the five years of being immersed in the fact, knowing every nook and cranny of the case. And they have to very quickly get up to speed because there is a very thick amount of time with which a retrial can occur. You can't extend past that. So that new prosecutor <coughs> has to get up to speed. And that's also going to put the defense at, on a, in a better position and give them a, a, an advantage because of the fact that they know the case better than the prosecutor and that 
going to be very lopsided. So this is this is huge. This right, is huge. No, but they've been through it. They've been through the first trial. John Phillips, what did you think when you heard this news? Julie, this is my case. Uh, we represent one of the victims, and I've been on this case since, uh, you know, right after it happened. And we've had our own run-ins with Miss Bradley related to Marcy's Law and, and obtaining information from the state attorney's office. And obviously have done our own investigation on the civil case related to some of the issues on both sides of the defense case with some statements between officers and prosecutors that shouldn't have happened. And then some frankly witness cover up and witness tampering on the other side. So th this is a bombshell. I, I do agree. Um, Miss Bradley is is now off. I suspect it's gonna be her superior that, that steps up or reassigns it. Uh, but the, you know, the good news you know, in Broward County is that they have the entire transcript from the first trial somebody can get up to speed and generally know what the witnesses are going to say when you usually don't have, you know, 20 days of depositions that you can refresh. John, thank you for that. And I, and I want to be fully transparent with our audience, as I always am. I didn't even know that you were representing, our, our whole team didn't know. Uh, you are involved in a lot of celebrity cases, which is why we wanted to have you on this, uh, very knowledgeable about Florida law. So just to be clear here, um, are you comfortable saying which family? We know there are two families affected here. Christopher Thomas's family. Christopher we, Thomas we've been on that case for a while, and and I, I haven't talked much about this one. So so, you know, I excuse Court TV for not knowing because there's been a lot of, of back and forth. And anytime I publicly comment, we get death threats and you know report them and put them up to channels on this case. But because of some of the, the ties to gangs and and some of the issues here we've you know we've we've been relatively quiet about this one but Sure. You know, when you have celebrity litigation, you get, you know, you get cases like this. Oh, yeah. Well, understandably so why you'd want to be quiet about this. And going back to the whole reason, uh, Melly um, was charged with, you know, witness tampering. That was the other big headline that happened in recent weeks. And the gist of it, as prosecutors laid it out, was that, you know, they say that he's in a gang or affiliated with the gang and that these gang members uh, working on the outside and some perhaps even uh, locked up where he is work together together to try to lean on state witnesses. Um, so uh, to your point, John, you know, if, if threats are coming, you're just, you know, just for doing what's right, representing victims who deserve to have their rights protected. Um, this is serious business, which I think was a tough hurdle for the prosecution to climb. Melba Pearson, let me go back to you on this. It seems like because this guy is a rapper, he's had some early success. I know he's young, but he worked with Kodak Black, Kanye West, some big artists had a hit. Um, he's had success. He's in the industry. He's got lots of followers. People like him. And we know that many in the rap industry are not gang members or gang affiliated, but want to present that persona to the public to look hard, look tough. And it seems to me here that maybe jurors thought, oh, well, this is just part of, you know, the rap game in the, in the art industry. What do prosecutors need to do better next time, Melba? Well, they're definitely going to have to, number one, get past this whole issue around uh, the, the potential of prosecutorial misconduct or the, the uh, withholding of evidence to the defense that already is going to be lurking large in this case because it's been in the media the jurors would have heard, potential jurors would have heard about it so they're going to have to rebuild their credibility from that perspective i think also they have to do a little bit of a better job of you know really parsing out that yes some people pretend to live that life for marketing purposes or to increase their sales and following but they have to show that this was not the case in this particular instance and that in fact when the you know the defendant was singing or rapping about these things and talking about these things it wasn't a joke it wasn't to boost his image is because he actually did in fact do it so it would have kind of piercing that veil of oh my gosh it's just you know it's just music it has nothing to do with reality. Mm -hmm. Love what you said there, Melba. John Phillips, same question to you, please. What do you think the state needs to do better in round two? You're gonna you're gonna catch me on this one. Everything, okay, <laughs> everything. Yeah. And, and and I do look at it as a positive 
because I've dealt with Miss Bradley for so many years. She's a she's a very capable attorney, but she didn't want anybody else with their hand in her cookie jar and it's worked against her. You you've got a this case, I, I'm all for cameras in the courtroom and I'm glad it was because I got to watch most of the trial from from Jacksonville. I was there for a lot of it. But this case was the biggest circus of any case I've ever seen with, you know, defense lawyers making faces and all the posturing and the back and forth. And like one of the defense lawyers had a book that she'd hide when she's talking to Melly about, you know, book of evil secrets kind of thing. And, you know, the jury that I saw was, was, pretty much tuned out a lot of the trial just because of some of the absurdity, the lack of control, frankly, by by the judge. I, I hope a retrial, you know, is a fresh look at this and, and, a, and a different prosecutor certainly will bring a different perspective. Mm -hmm. Right, John. Yeah, it might be a good thing for the state. You know, I know they weren't wanting this, but hey, look, you know, they didn't get the job done. Um, I saw it was reported and I who knows what the split was. I, I saw reported nine to three, nine guilty, three not guilty. So, you know, three people, you know, and they're trying to pursue the death penalty here. Maybe a fresh set of eyes will be a good thing. Uh, we have to leave the discussion there for now. John Phillips is going to stay with us. Big thank you and goodbye to Melba Pearson for everything today. We'll see you back on the show very soon, I hope. And when we come back here, we're going to take a look at David Trones's possible motivation for the murder that the state of Florida says he did. Prosecutors say this guy was living a double life. And